for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. Ah, yes, indeed. Speaking of low overhead country, I'm pleased to announce that the owner has joined us. That's actually not a surprise. He's here every Monday and Friday. Generally speaking, today is Monday. He is here. Ivan Strickler is the owner of Frontier Motors, located at 230 Beverly Parkway, but he's located here in our studios, ready, willing, and able to take any phone calls from you. Call us, 478-3116, for the remainder of this half hour. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Don. And we are also taping this, videotaping this, for our Blab TV customers. So if you're watching uh, this on TV, you're welcome. And uh, this is a half-hour show about Frontier Motors and what's going on in the automobile industry in Pensacola and nationwide. One of the things that Don uh, said that we help with is if you're listening to this on the radio, I can give you a value of the car. And the way that we give you values is a little bit different than what you'd get if you go on the internet. Obviously, if you are going to be selling your own car or you want to know what it's worth, if you're going to trade it somewhere, you can go on the internet. And they will have uh, they have, will have an NADA guide on the internet. They have an Edmunds car guide. And uh, they also have the blue, the Kelly Blue Book. So those are the three that you see on the internet. We use a little bit diff- different format at Frontier Motors and uh, we do use an NEDA guidebook that looks uh, like this. It's actually an orange book. Uh, it's not the same book that you get online. It's a little bit different because we use the ones that are bankers and our credit unions and a lot of our insurance companies in Pensacola use. So it's not that it's a better book, higher or lower. It's just a little bit different value. So we you definitely want to check to make sure that if you use the Kelly Blue Book, for example, that it matches what the NEDA guide is. We also use the Black Wholesale Guidebook. And this is a book that's compiled with the auction data. And that leads me into the auctions. The largest auctions in the world are the Mannheim auctions owned by Cox Communications. We happen to have a Mannheim auction right here in Pensacola on W Street. And W Street runs on Tuesday. They normally have between five and 600 cars that they run. Tuesday also happens to be the second largest sale in the nation, which is Orlando. We have a buyer that drives to Orlando On Mondays, he gets there Monday afternoon, and he'll get up early Tuesday morning and start looking at cars for Frontier Motors. And the reason we like to go to the Orlando auction, because they have between five and 6,000 cars to choose from. There's approximately 12 or 13 auctions in our area, which includes the Atlanta, uh, Nashville. Uh, Actually, there's two or three of them in Atlanta. Uh, uh, New Orleans has some. Hattiesburg, Mississippi, there's a bunch of them in Florida, including Tampa and Orlando, St. Petersburg, and on and on. And within those auctions, we have the ability to look at approximately 25,000 cars a week. Now, the reason I'm making a big deal about this is because perhaps you're looking for a particular used car and you're having difficulty finding it, or you're going on autotradercars.com and Maybe everybody's asking too much money or you can't find what you're looking for. Well, that's why you would contact Frontier Motors. And what we would do is locate that car for you. And we would go through the equipment, the color, the condition, and the pricing of that car. And then we would buy that car for you with the understanding that you would accept delivery of the vehicle as long as it passed your inspection. And that is our locate program, which we've been doing locates for customers for 21 years now. There's a little bit difference. You you hear about... Uh, dealerships saying that we'll find you any car you're looking for. But most dealerships, what they really do is they take down your name and phone number and they call you when they happen to get lucky enough to get one in trade of whatever you're looking for. We get a little more aggressive than that at Frontier Motors by actually going out and buying that car for you. Most uh, dealerships won't do that because they ha- if they have 400 cars in stock like Frontier Motors, they're hesitant at going into buying another car only because perhaps of a color or because a couple of pieces of equipment, they always are told to sell what you have. Well, Frontier Motors, we don't, we'd love to sell you what we have, but if we don't have what you want exactly, we go and find it. I'll give you a prime example. I had a friend of mine that was looking for a 2015 or 16 Hyundai Equus, which is their top the line luxury car. I had a Hyundai Genesis on the lot. It was the color that he wanted. It only had 2000 miles on it. So, of course, I offered him the Hyundai Genesis. And when he said, no, I want the Equus because it's a little bit bigger, We want. it took about three weeks for me to find him an Equus 
exactly what he's looking for, and now he is taking delivery of his Equus. I believe it was a low-mileage car, still under factory warranty, and it was the color and the equipment that he was looking for. People always ask me how long does it take to find a car, and I tell them it really depends on how specific you are. If you want one color, one interior color, uh, and uh, a list of options that you have to have, it might take me longer than if you came in and said, hey, call me when you get a nice Lexus RX 350 that you can sell for about $20,000. So if you're flexible on color and equipment, of course it makes it easier. That doesn't mean you have to be flexible on color equipment. We'll get you whatever you want. The other thing that we do at Frontier Motors is I always advertise that we are the go-to dealer for free advice when you are in the car buying mode. Now, what that means is that we will give you advice on what your car should bring on trade-in if you decide to buy a brand new car. You want to stop in front of your motor so we can arm you with the appraisal. You put it in your back pocket. You don't pull it out until you need it. And the way that we always urge you to make your best deal is to get the best possible price you can on the car you're purchasing and then toss the used car manager your keys and say, now tell me what you'll give me in real cash value for my trade-in. That's very important because sometimes it gets a little confusing when you're purchasing a $40,000 car, for example, and they tell you, well, we'll give you $20,000 on trade-in off the $40,000. But what if you didn't have your trade-in and you could get, let's say, $4,000 discount? So you want to get that discount and then get the good trade-in value for the car. And we'll show you how to go about doing that. So that's one thing we can help you with. The other thing we can help you with is we can give you a free Carfax report if you are going to buy a used car from a private individual. Carfax these days costs about $40 for one. I think it's almost $100 if you want nine or 10 of them. I looked the other day and it was $99 for, I believe, uh, nine Carfax reports. And the reason they do that is in case you're looking at multiple cars at different dealerships, because a lot of dealerships will run a Carfax report for you, but they will charge you for it, which doesn't make any sense to me. By the way, if you go on our website and any one of our cars on our website says free Carfax report right here. So you click on it and you get the Carfax report at no charge on the cars that we have in inventory. We also uh, print these Carfax reports out and we put them in the glove box of our cars. We don't want to hide anything. Let's say, for example, we took a car in trade and it had been in a bad accident. We don't want to hide that from anybody. We know it when we buy it because we run a Carfax report on every car before we own it. Now, when we have a trade-in, we don't have that choice. If you've got a car that's been in three accidents, we normally wouldn't go out and buy that car, but we'll take it in trade. And, of course, the value is going to be a little bit less because it's been in multiple accidents. At least most people would assume they're going to get a better deal on the car because a lot of people wouldn't even buy that car if it's been in three accidents. Some people would, especially if the accidents were long ago, it was fixed properly. The car has been on the road, has uh, proven to be a good car after it's been repaired, and the fact that it's going to be less expensive, which also leads me into another thing that we give to our customers. We give them a letter of diminished value. Now, you might think, what the heck is that? Well, let's say you get into a major accident with your brand spanking new car. You decided to buy a brand new car. You're driving off the dealer's lot. You don't even make it to the street and you get T-boned. And your $40,000 vehicle now has $20,000 worth of damage. But you were smart enough to call the insurance company before you left the dealer's lot. And you now have your car insured. So what is the insurance company going to tell you? They're going to tell you, okay, we're going to take it over to the body shop. And we're going to fix it for you. Like brand spanking new. Well, what does that do to the value of your car? It diminishes the value, hence the letter of diminished value. And if that was the case, a $40,000 car with $20,000 worth of damage and the car was a brand new car, I would say that you would probably have somewhere between four and $5,000 coming to you from the insurance company, even though they're going to fix it. Because if you decide next week to trade it in the Frontier Motors, I'm going to appraise that car at least $4,000 to $5,000 less because I have to share that information with the next owner. Now, who would want to buy a car with five miles on it? Again, you took a delivered brand new car. It's driving off the lot. You got T-bone before you even made it home. So the car has five miles on it and it shows... Major damage reported. Vehicle had to be towed. Airbags deployed. And now you're sitting at the dealer that took that car in trade, and you're saying, well, I don't know if I'd be interested in that car. Well, if I saved you $5,000, you might. 
And that's where you get a little diminished value Oops. because the insurance. we would want you to take advantage of depreciation. And I'm happy to announce that Dave Ramsey has jumped on our bandwagon and talks about depreciation just like Frontier Motors. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Hey, Dave Ramsey here. Whether you're on Baby Step 1 or Baby Step 7, my advice when it comes to buying a car has been the same. Don't buy new. Consumer Reports last year put into writing that a new car depreciates 27% in the first 12 months. On an average price $34,000 new car, that's roughly a $9,200 loss in the first year alone. Here's what you should do instead. Go see my friends at Frontier Motors. They specialize in great used cars that still look and smell like new. Frontier Motors offers over 400 of these vehicles in stock in one location. What sets these guys apart from a regular car dealership is that they make the hated process of buying a car a stress-free experience. They're one of the few dealers that will give you a bottom-line, out-the-door price in writing. It's not very easy finding an honest car dealer, but I know you'll be treated right when you shop at Frontier motors tell them dave ramsey sent you thanks uh dave thanks for that endorsement and uh, i do have uh the article that he's talking about which is in april's edition of consumers reports where they say that first year depreciation is 27 percent, which is 9180 dollars uh, in the first year alone after year two the average appreciation is 37 percent, which is twelve thousand five hundred eighty dollars and after the third year it's a $15,600 depreciation. And the fourth year, the average new car, which, by the way, last year was $35,000, was the average price of a, uh, a new car. In four years, you lose $19,000, which is a 56% depreciation in four years. Don, do we have a call? This is Bill. Hey, Bill, thanks for calling the Frontier Motor Show. How can we help you? You're welcome. I'd like to get a uh, trade-in value on my... Uh 2003 uh, Tahoe. Okay, let's do that real quick for you, Bill. I, I've got. Uh, I'm going to pull it up here, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions because uh, sure. we'll run it. Uh, we'll run it the way the computer does it here. So, is it a two wheel drive Tahoe or four wheel drive? It's two wheel drive. Okay, and does it have the leather or cloth interior? It's got the leather. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's an LT. L- it's an LT. Yeah. Tell me the miles, Bill. It's got uh, 110,000. Okay, which is actually pretty low miles for the year of the vehicle. It is. I <clears> keep them a while. Yes, and uh, a couple of questions that they asked me as far as equipment. Uh, leather interior is standard on the LT. Does it have the electric sunroof? No sunroof. And what about the, 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 the second row seats? Are they bucket seats or is it a bench in the second row? They're bucket seats. Okay. And do you have the DVD, drop-down DVD player for the kids? I do. Yes. Okay. And then uh, I'm assuming you have a trailer towing package, which I just bought. And I'm assuming that you have the third seat in there. Yes. Okay. Now, I know there can be other equipment, Bill, but what happens once it gets to that year, that's the only thing they add for. You know, I know that there's other features you can put on a vehicle, uh, um, like navigation and things, but that's all they add for. And right now I'm coming up with a retail value of just about $11,000, which is still a, a pretty darn good retail value. I, I really? take that back. My computer cut off. You know, Eleven. Uh, yeah, no, that's not right. It was eleven hundred dollar odometer edition. I'm sorry, my okay. computer cut off. I thought it said eleven thousand dollars. The ad for the miles bill is eleven hundred dollars. With the mileage ad for having low miles for that year vehicle, the wholesale value of that vehicle is about five thousand dollars. That's what you might expect to get from a dealer on a trade in. The okay. retail value is eighty two hundred dollars, and that's what you might be able to ask for it if you're going to sell it yourself. My um, experience with an older Tahoe like that is it's probably not going to bring full retail if you decide to sell yourself. I'm thinking being an 03 model, if it's in good condition, it'll probably bring around $7,000. And the dealers are probably going to appraise it for somewhere around four to five in there somewhere. Yeah, I took it to Chevrolet. I was mm-hmm. going to trade it in uh, last year. And they offered me $4,000, and I thought that was pretty low. Yeah, well, based on the fact the retail is 8000 now, again, like I said, even if you retailed it, which is like you put it on Craigslist and try to sell it, I mm-hmm. think you can get away with asking $8,000. 8200 actually is retail. But I think realistically, if you're going to market the vehicle yourself, it's probably going to bring somewhere in that $7,000 range, less any major reconditioning. You know, if you, if you got, you know, you need tires and things like that. But but that's the way to maximize the vehicle's value, but then you have to do it yourself. 
Because a yeah. dealership is scared of that vehicle. Number one, Bill, a reminder, you can't finance an 03 model vehicle anymore. So the dealers get a little bit nervous about it because if somebody, let's say, let's say the deal, the vehicle's got a wholesale value of 4000 they're going to want to sell it for $6,000. Well, if they can't get it financed, somebody has got $6,000 cash, they can put that down on a newer Tahoe and have reasonable payments. So that's just like a catch-22, you know, yeah. so you have to market the vehicle to the right a person that has that type of cash in their back pocket. And that's probably why you're getting less from the dealerships because, and they can't find this either, by the way, if they have a floor plan for their used cars, the floor plan won't go to a 2003 model. So you kind of stuck that way. But, but I think actually $4,000, if they give you a deal on whatever you're buying and then give you $4,000, that's really not that bad. But if it's off of their list price, then that's not a good deal at all. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for calling the show. I got to run. We've only got about uh, 13 minutes left. Okay. Thank I appreciate you. your calling. One of the things that we want to talk about, Don, I don't know if you've ever seen these here, if you get these in the mail, if you're watching this on TV. Oh, yeah. These are these uh, th- these mailers that you get. And this one's a really fancy yeah, one. This it one, is. This it's one came huge. to my general manager, Todd Gordon. Todd used to be the uh, the coach for the Ice Pilots, and now he's working at Frontier Motors as our general manager. And uh, uh, if uh, he brought this in and he says that he immediately is going to win $2,907 when he scratches off the scratch off and you can win up to $25,000 just to come in and look at the dealership. This is actually a, this is actually a advertisement from Gulf Breeze. They're going to have some used cars at the Gulf Breeze flea market. I always wonder about these things because I'm, I'm assuming they cost money. A a mailer like this probably costs two or $3 just to print and then costs another 50 cents or 60 cents to send it out. How does the price of the car go lower and become a better deal when they're going to give someone $25,000 if they get right the right scratch off? And this actually says that the least amount that you're going to get was 350 bucks. No, I'm sorry. The least amount is uh, two winners of $150 cash, $500 cash, $1,000 cash. It's a joke. Folks, don't fall for these things. When you get these in the mail, you rip them up and toss them in the garbage. The same thing with off-site sales, if you know what I'm talking about. They had one last year at Cordoba Mall. All these dealers get together. They put these huge tents out. They bring all their cars in. They bring generators. They bring computers in. They bring an outside service. And what they do is this outside service has these salespeople come in. They're high-pressure sales tactics. They're, hey, if you buy this car right now, you're going to get $3,000 off. But it's only good today, and you got to buy it right now. Well, one good thing about those sales, the only good thing that I know about those sales is you've got a three-day rescission built in those sales. If a dealer sells a vehicle off of their premises, you have three days to cancel a deal. We don't do those types of sales because it costs money to have those sales. Aren't you better off keeping the cars at the lot, not renting a tent and computers and other individuals? I think that makes the price go up, not down. So don't fall for sales. In the used car industry, I don't ever feel there's such a thing as a sale. The the only times that you get a, a, a deal on a car is if there's something wrong with the vehicle, number one, Or number two, the vehicle becomes aged. Let's just say I buy a car for $20,000. It sits there for 100 days. Nobody even looks at it. It's possible that I'll sell that car for $20,000 or $19,000 just to get rid of it. That's a pretty good deal. When a dealer first gets it, obviously, they're going to try to make money on it. That can be anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000, somewhere on the average. Last year, our Automotive News Magazine said that the average uh, dealership made $1,600 on a used car which sounds like a lot, but it's really not when the average overhead at a dealership is almost $1,500 per car. When you make $1,600, you're making a hundred dollars a car. Now it adds up if you sell a whole bunch of cars and that's after your overhead, which would be of course, insurance and maintenance and buildings, uh, taxes. And that's one of the things that we talk about at Frontier Motors. We keep our overhead very, very low by number one, paying cash for our building 21 years ago, we paid $105,000 for our building. We wanted to move to Car City, but the mausoleums in Car City, even 21 years ago, were a million dollars plus. Imagine what that does to your overhead, especially if you don't have the cash, which I didn't have the cash, to be able to pay cash for a building like that. So you have to finance it. You have to pay interest. And then, of course, when you buy a million-dollar building, you have to pay insurance on a million-dollar building, which is quite expensive. 
in the state of Florida because you have to have normally three different insurances, including flood and wind. And then you have to pay taxes on that building. So we opted the opposite. And one of the things that is our slogan is low overhead country. And don't get me don't get me wrong. Of course we have overhead. We have employees, we have taxes and everything else, like everybody else. But we try to keep that low. And even Consumers Report says that the average savings that you'll have from an independent used car dealership is between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars over a new car dealership because of the overhead alone. And the only way that you're going to find that out is by coming to Frontier Motors and checking us out. And one of the things that you're going to see at Frontier Motors is you're going to see 400 cars in inventory, anywhere between 350 and 400, depending on the day of the week. Our, ve- our vehicles are unlocked every morning. We have a price list available to you so you can walk around at your leisure. You know, people love shopping on a Sunday for a reason. They don't want to be hassled or what they consider being hassled by a salesperson that keeps making uh, remarks about you buying a car today when you're not even ready to make a decision. You're just gathering information. And that's why people like coming to Frontier Motors because our salespeople do not hassle you into making a decision when you're not ready. The other thing we're going to be able to do is almost when you come to Frontier Motors, we can show you every make and model. So we don't have to sell you one particular make. If you go to the Toyota dealership, what are they going to try to sell you? Toyota. And then you go across the street and you want to look at Hondas because they have excellent reputation like Toyota. And that salesman is going to tell you why his Honda is better than a Toyota. And then you go to the Nissan store just to check out the third import. And you go to the Nissan store and that salesman has been trained to tell you why that Nissan is better than a Honda and the Toyota. At Frontier Motors, we have the Honda, Toyota, and the Nissan, all of them on a lot, side by side. You can test drive them. We can tell you the difference in prices. And then what if, hypothetically, you want to also look at the domestic competition, which would be, if you're looking at a Camry, for example, you would be looking at a Ford Fusion. Maybe you're going to be looking at a, uh, at a Chevrolet uh, Impala or a Malibu or a Chevy Cruze or a Sonic. Maybe you want to go to the higher line imports and look at a uh, M37 or a G37 Infiniti or maybe a Lexus ES350 or LS460. We have them all lined up, and our salespeople don't have to sell you a car. What you do is you pick one out, you test drive it, and the next question is, what's the best you can do? How much will you give me for my trade? And then what we do is we give you an out-the-door figure. This is unheard of in the car industry, folks. I always tell people that if they go to a car dealership that won't give you the total out-the-door figure, I would walk out. And I'm talking with taxes, your trade-in, the license plate fee, the transfer fee, if they have a tire fee, a tire tax, or a battery tax. It doesn't matter what the tax is. I don't care what stupid fees they charge you. Some dealerships charge a dock fee and a setup fee. There's some dealerships in Car City that I saw by looking at their cars on a Sunday when I went there. They have an addendum sticker on next to the window sticker for $2,000 for additional markup. Sometimes they'll give you rust proofing or gloss treatment or a pinstripe for $1,900. There's one dealer, I'm not going to mention the name of the dealer. I'm mad at uh, enough of me already the way that we talk about because I, I, I don't badger individual dealers, but I think it's kind of shady to put a markup over the list price of the vehicle and call it a marketing adjustment. What the heck is that? A marketing adjustment? In other words, I'm charging over what the market bears on this particular vehicle. I guess it doesn't matter as long as they take it off of there if you ask them to. I think one of the reasons they do this from my experience of selling new cars is that they can give you more money for your trade. We had Bill call before and he said they gave me $4,000 for my Tahoe at the new car dealership. Well, if the new car dealership marks up their vehicles, $2,000, now they can give you 6,000 for your trade and you feel a little better. And Bill, if you're still listening to this, I want to let you know, don't fall for that. Cause there's some dealerships that do put that huge markup on there so they can give you $3,000 for a $1,000 car. You ever see that or hear that push-pull-drag deal that goes on where they guarantee you $3,000 for your car, even if it doesn't drive? You can drag it in. You can have your plow horse drag it into the dealership, and they'll give you $3,000. Well, how can they do that for a $100 car? Well, they mark up all their cars enough that they can give you $3,000 for a, for a $300 car. Because the junkyard even pays $300 for a car if you drag it in there, but they don't pay $3,000, they pay $300. So these are the things that I'm talking about that's not going to happen at Frontier Motors. We're going to give you an out-the-door figure. That way it makes it so simple. 
So if my figure is $18,550 out the door for my 2000 and uh, let's take a look at one of the cars I've got uh, on my screen here. For my, I've got a uh, 2015 Cadillac ATS with 5,000 miles. That's a two-door sports coupe that Cadillac makes. So let's say I give you an out-the-door figure with your trade-in of $18,550, and you'll go to Vince Wibbs and take a look at a brand new one, because that's where I would go. Always go to your local dealer and buy from them if possible. They'll have a 2018 sitting on their showroom, and if they're 2018, which is three years newer now, don't forget, I've only got 5,000 miles on mine, it's three years newer, but their car is $28,000 out the door instead of $18,000 out the door, you might want to go with ours with 5,000 miles on it. I counted before we did the show here, we have 61 cars in inventory at Frontier Motors that have less than 9,000 miles on them. That's pretty low miles. I got a Ford Explorer that we just purchased that has 327 miles on it. 300 miles on a 17 Ford Explorer. We have a Nissan Altima with 300 miles, a Toyota RAV4 with 500 miles, a Chevy Malibu with 1,000 miles, a Nissan Versa with 1,400 miles, a Mazda 3 with 1,500 miles, a Chevy Equinox with 1,500 miles. The list goes on and on and on. So out of almost 400 cars, we have 60 of them under 10,000 miles. We have another 100 that are under 30,000 miles. And the rest of my cars that we have purchased or taken in trade and purchased by private individuals like yourself that have put their cars on Craigslist, we call them up and say, hey, why don't you just bring us that car? You'll be pleasantly surprised on how much we might pay you for that vehicle if it's listed on Craigslist. Don't list it. The first three pages of Craigslist talking about scams and what to look out for. It gets a little hairy out there when people come over to your house, especially when they're coming over to buy your car and they want to test drive it and you find they don't come back. <laughs> so anyways, take us up on our purchase appraisal. We can tell you what the car's worth. We can write you a check. You can cancel your insurance, take off your tag, and get a ride home. That's how easy it is. Frontier Motors is located at 230 Beverly Parkway. We've been in business for 21 years. We're going on our 22nd year now. We started in 1996 in November. So we've been there and started with about 30 cars. Now we have almost 400 cars in inventory. Most of our customers are repeat or referrals. And the reason is because we are a dealership that makes it actually fun to buy a car, which is unheard of. You can have fun. People hate buying a car for one reason, not because they can't afford it, because they don't like the car buying process. You will love it at Frontier Motors because we will sell you a car when you want to buy one. We're always ready to take your order, but that's what we do. We take orders. We don't trick you into buying a car or, sell, or, or making a decision when you're not ready. We never give you the old, well, you better buy it today because it'll be sold tomorrow even though some cars are sold tomorrow, when we sell about eight to 10 cars every single day, that equates into about 200 cars a month that we rotate, which by the way means that we've got to buy between 60 and 70 cars every single week. Let us buy your car when you're ready to sell. That's Frontier Motors, 230 Beverly Parkway. Check out our website, check us out on YouTube, and check us out on Facebook. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Pay come in today, doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country.